Или когда ты смотришь футбол по телевизору. Or when you are watching football. Ты говоришь игрокам, как играть? По телевизору. By TV. Yeah, on TV. On TV. И ты говоришь, что это я шизофреник? And you telling me that I am schizophrenic? Потому что иногда люди пытаются говорить с неодушевленными вещами. I mean, frequently people try to talk to inmates и считают это нормальным. Но когда реальный Бог говорит к людям, people, они говорят, это ненормально. Say, oh, и Бог призывает нас, чтобы открыть им глаза и уши. Потому что нас Бог вчера, сегодня и во веки тот же. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And for, forever. forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Я не знаю, сколько здесь людей, которым говорил когда-либо Бог. I don't know how many people are here who could say, well, God really spoke to me. Если точнее сказать, я не знаю людей, которые умеют слышать Бога. To be honest, I don't know people who knows how to но я знаю, что Бог говорит каждому. Даже тот, который говорит, что я никогда не слышал Бога. Бог говорит. Остановись и послушай, что говорит Бог. Сегодняшнее общество, оно немножко избаловано. Вы помните, когда Иисус пришел э, в один дом и проповедовал? Uh, и, и там было две сестры, Мария и Марфа. Sisters, Maria and Martha. И э, вы представляете, как ученики, их было много, ну, 12. И плюс еще там других было много людей. И когда они зашли, они заняли места. Ну, кто-то сел на стул. И на скамейку. Ну, развалился. Петр, допустим, он так лег, вот так вот. Ну, он же главный. И одной девушке не хватило места. Но она, она очень хотела услышать Иисуса. Really И она села у его ног. Это было одно из самых неудобных мест. Но вы представьте, сидеть возле чужих ног. В то время улицы были без асфальта. At that time, there was no pavement on the streets. Навоз. There was uh, animal excrements. Это было грязь кругом. Dirt. И ноги у многих просто пахли. And simply feet were just stinky. Но она села туда. But she was sitting at his Ей feet. было все равно. She didn't care. Она просто хотела слышать, что скажет Иисус. She just wanted to hear what Jesus is. Когда мы откажемся от комфорта, comfort, только для того, чтобы услышать Слово от Бога, so us, сердце наше откроется, open, и мы услышим Его голос. Бог нас любит. Really Бог любит каждого. И как однажды брат Мартинес проповедовал нас. И мне так это очень понравилось и легло в сердце. Он не любит каждого как-то одного сильнее, другого это. Мы иногда говорим, Бог любит всех одинаково. Но вот брат Мартинес сказал, Бог любит каждого по-особенному. But what I was saying that God loves everyone specially. 
каждого по-особенному. И просто Бог не может любить другого, как тебя. God simply cannot love someone else like he loves you. И Бог не может любить тебя как другого. And he cannot love you like he loves someone else. Он любит тебя по-особенному. Very special love, special place for you in, in his И он для тебя лично отдал себя. And he personally gave himself for you, sacrificed for you. И я люблю Иисуса. I love Jesus. I really love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Давайте его прославим. Will worship.
Thank you for that. That's beautiful. We really felt the presence of God here throughout the day. Tonight, let's stay in this 
attitude and atmosphere of worship, shall we? Давайте вот останемся, вот будем стараться вот оставаться в этом в этой атмосфере. Steve Taylor is another young singer and songwriter. Steve Taylor вот молодой пишущий вот музыкант, который пишет песни. And he's someone who's been through horrendous suffering in his time. И он прошел через довольно сложный тяжелый путь. But God brought him through. Но Бог его вывел. And we thank God for Stephen's faithfulness to God and God's faithfulness to him. In really difficult times. So Stephen's going to say, uh, share a little bit of testimony with us and then sing for us. Amen. Praise God. God is good. God has been so good to me. I never get bored of sharing my testimony. Because my testimony is my gift. That God has given me. The Christian life is not always easy. But we have someone that can give us strength to get through the, the most difficult times. Um, and in 2004, um, I started to get very, very ill, very poorly. I had a bleed in my in my bowel, which led to numerous operations. And the result of that was I was left with uh, a lot of complications, and I had to be fed um, through a drip. То есть были множество компликаций, и мне надо было через капельницу кормить. 12 часов каждый день под капельницей. И мне было выписано 44 разные таблетки, которые мне надо было принимать. То есть я вообще почти ничего не кушал. I could only drink a small amount every day. And around um, six years ago, I went to London. After a lot of prayer from the church, this church and my church, um, E5 Bristol, and, and various other people are around the world praying for me. And I'm here today completely free of medication. Praise God. And I'm able to, as you can see, I haven't stopped eating since. So um, I'm almost eating a normal diet now. Just God is so good. And recently we've had another storm in our family. My sister-in-law is going through cancer treatment. But what God has done before, he will do again. До сих пор то он будет верен и в будущем. И вот через все это время Бог дал нам чудный мир. И вот эта песня, которую я написал для своей родственники. Что когда она пройдет вот весь этот процесс, и когда она будет опять здоровая, она бы могла бы взглянуть назад. С 
Thank you, Steve. Steve's become a great friend, a uh, great friend of the fellowship here, and uh, it's always a joy to listen to him. Bless you. Some years ago, at one of our IGO, International Gospel Outreach Conferences, we went to a place called Cliff College. <clears throat> a good friend of ours was a man called Bob Searle. And Bob's daughter was at the college. And so was a man called Kingsley Armstrong. 
So I guess we go back about that far. That must be about it, I think. And uh, can I just ask you, have you enjoyed the preaching today? That was the easy question. Now here's a difficult one. You haven't enjoyed the preaching. <laughs> you doing him? Hey? What can we do with you? What can we do with you? <laughs> Okay, first question, did you enjoy it? And everyone except Pastor Andre enjoyed the preaching today. Okay, here's the difficult question then. Well, it's, the question's easy, but the answer may be difficult. Have you been challenged by the preaching today? And... What about the million dollar question, the big one? Are you ready for that one, number, number three? Are you going to do anything with what you've heard today? Amen. Great. Kingsley, bless you. Good evening, everyone. You can answer, good evening, everyone. I hope you don't fall asleep after your tea, but praise the Lord, it's good to be here today. Uh, I'm just the warm-up one this evening. I'm the warm-up act. <laughs> I'm not going to take very long. I mean that. I'm not going to take long this evening. And I've changed what I'm, I want to say. I want to keep in the, the theme that has been shared on already. I, my background is one from Northern Ireland where I a very uh, religious background, really. And I was brought up in the same sort of evangelism techniques training that the rest of you talked about today. In fact, I remember when I came back from college, I went to college in Cliff College, as, as Andy said. I was working in the Methodist Church in Ireland. And I remember if I walked past somebody, I felt guilty if I didn't tell them about Jesus. So I felt better if there was nobody on the road than I didn't have to tell them. You know where I'm coming from? <laughs> Lord, let the roads be empty today when I walk on them. Because it was a guilt-driven exercise. But my motives were pure. I know that Jesus died for everybody. I was brought up as a Methodist believing that all men can be saved, and I still believe that today. But I had no understanding about the leading of the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's amazing looking back at how God occasionally used my clumsiness. I must have offended so many people in my life. But God is good and He is faithful. And I've started to discover that God is in control. And He will lead us. I'm just going to tell you a few stories. Is that all right? A few weeks ago, I was in Romania. And I go to Romania once or twice every year now. And I was in Brasov in the center of Romania. Who knows Brasov here? It's a wonderful place. And uh, I've, I've been there many times. And I'm working with a pastor called Pastor Yosef in Brasov. And I love going to his church. 
And his church is called the Kingdom Center, something like that. And I spoke at one of their college weekends last year. So as I was going to the, to the conference earlier this year, Yosef said to me, there's somebody I want you to meet. It's a new pastor. He's come into the town. He's called Pastor Adi. And I want you to meet him. So I said, fine. He said, he's a kingdom man, just like you are. He's coming to the conference and he's speaking before you'll be speaking. So I find. So he came along and, and he spoke. And afterwards I went up to meet him. And he looked at me. And he said, Kingsley. Kingsley Armstrong. Your ministry is called the Joshua Project. And suddenly... My eyes opened. 19 years ago, with my church in North Allerton, I led a team to Romania, to a, to a town called Ayud. And I was ministering in a church called the Joshua Church. And I had a fantastic week. And at the end of the week, a pastor asked to spend some time with me. So he took me out. We went up in the, in the hills. I don't know where he was taking me. Kidnapped by a Romanian pastor. And we climbed, we climbed over a gate into a field. I didn't know where I was going. And then he sat down in the middle of the field. And I sat down beside him. And he started to open his heart. And for about half an hour, we shared our hearts. And his name was Pastor Adi. And his partner was Pastor Dan. And I wrote their name down, Pastor Adi and Pastor Dan, in my prayer book. And I knew that God had knitted our hearts together. And I prayed for them probably every day. For many, many years. And I never heard of them again. Until a few weeks ago. What had happened that he had moved from Ayud to a city called Cluj. And has started a new church in Cluj. And Pastor Dan came and joined him. I knew God had wanted me to work with this man 19 years ago. And I had prayed for many years for him. But I'd put it out of my mind. Until he stood and faced me and said, Kingsley. And suddenly I remembered... The prayer time in the field 19 years previously. I'm going, to, I'm going to Romania in November. I have two American friends. And now three Romanian friends. And we're going on a missions trip through Romania, Moldova, Transnistria. And Adi is on my team. I say that for this reason, is that God is in control of everything. I want to read two verses to you. The first one is in the book of 1 Kings. Do you need to borrow my glasses? You okay? You want? Just checking. 1 Kings chapter 19. And verse 18. Oh, I'll go 16. 16 to 18. This is when Elijah, Elijah was in the cave running away from God and Jezebel. 
1, 1 Kings 19, verse 16. You shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. Did you get that? Okay, 1 Kings 19, verse 16. And it shall be whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. Whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. That's 17. Exactly. It's, it's the next verse I want you to note. He says, yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed the knee. Just a thought this evening. Who were the 7,000? We have no record of them in Scripture. We know that there were 50 in one cave, 50 in another cave that a prophet saved. But there's no way, you'll not find the 7,000 anywhere in Scripture. But I want to show you one of them. If you turn to 2 Kings and chapter 10 and verse 15. 2 Kings 10 verse 15. Is this yours the same Bible? No, it's the... Russians like to make complicated things. So oh, okay. Putin. Second, second Kings. Second Kings, so chapter ten. Russians. There's more kings. It's more than two. Because we follow up apostles. All right. Okay. <laughs> Putin's not a king, though, is he? No. Okay. <laughs> Verse fifteen of Second Kings ten. It's, uh, do you want me to read it first? Shall yeah, I read? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, when he, that's when uh, Jehu departed from there, he met Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he greeted him and said to him, Is your heart right as my heart is toward your heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. Jehu said, If it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand and took him up into the chariot. I want to ask you a question tonight in a moment. God said to Elijah, there are 7,000 who have not bowed their knee to Baal. But he doesn't mention them again. He said, go and anoint Jehu as the king. And Jehu's job was to destroy the household of Ahab. But on his way to Samaria, there's a man standing by the side of the road whose name is Jehonadab. Now, Jehonadab has a tremendous history, which I'm not going to talk about tonight. All I want to say to you is this. He was totally different from Jehu. Everything about him was different. But Jehu stopped his chariot long enough to give him his hand. I've discovered as I travel, I used to think that God wanted me to tell everybody about Jesus. And that's not a bad thing to think. Because everybody needs Jesus. But I've discovered something. When Jesus sent his disciples out, it says in the book of Luke, he sent them into villages where he himself was about to go. So what I've discovered is this. 
It's a bit of Methodist theology, really. Methodists believe in prevenient grace. Pre- I don't know how you translate it. Grace that goes before. In other words, God doesn't want anyone to perish. So he devises ways where they can find out about him. And if we are willing, he sets us up every day. Kathy and I have a little expression. I've said it to some of you before that it's not about the coffee. Kathy and I go out for coffee almost every day when I'm at home. But I find when we go into a coffee shop, I overhear a conversation or something happens which gets my ear and it's my opportunity to speak. But it's God that sets me up. And the challenge that I have is to stop my chariot so I can hold out my hand. In January, I was, I was in Guatemala. And I love going to Guatemala, one of my favorite places in the world. I was speaking at two conferences and speaking at the opening of a, of a church. But when I arrived there, I was with many of you know our friends, the Humphreys family who live there. Humphreys, yeah. And so we went out for a day. They went. They wanted to buy me breakfast. And I love Guatemalan breakfast. It's the black beans. I love black beans. So we went up into the mountains. And one of the places there is called Hocatenango. But they've, they've developed this, this place up the mountain called Hobbit Tenango. And they've built all these little hobbits. Any of you like Lord of the Rings? They've built a hotel with little hobbits for short people. It's beautiful. But it's halfway up a mountain. And when you get to the car park, then you've got to climb another half a mile up to the restaurant. And they have little huts all around. It's beautiful. But when I got to the car park, I overheard an argument. Two Americans were arguing. That never happens, does it? These two American lads, the young lads, probably in their late 20s, early 30s. Long dreadlocks and tattoos. They looked a bit like me, really. (laughs) They looked nothing like me. They probably would say, thank God for that. (laughs) But there were two young guys. and, And they were arguing with a taxi driver. So I went over to talk to them to see what the problem was because I'm nosy. But I've learned something. I've learned that God sets us up continually. So I went over to talk to them. And the funny thing was they had come from the airport. They were staying in Hobbitanango. And so when I went over, they were told from the airport that they could pay the tax, that could use their credit card to pay the taxi driver. Well, they had no money at all. And they were actually looking for an ATM up the mountain. I won't say that was an American that did that. You're this. They're... I think they were from L.A. or somewhere like that. Yeah. I, yeah. So, so I had to say the, the ATMs are shut today. 
But the, the taxi fare was not a lot of money. No, it wasn't expensive. So I said, I'll pay your taxi fare. So I paid the taxi driver, and the guy said, oh, thank you very much. We'll buy you breakfast. I'm thinking, how can they buy me breakfast? I can't afford a taxi. Anyway. But I said to them, listen, God has blessed me. God bless you. Just be blessed. So we walked up, myself and the Humphreys, we walked up to get breakfast at the cafe. And these guys were sitting, they, they came up as well. Because they'd already paid for their stay, I think, in Hobbit Tenango. So I, while my breakfast was getting ready, I, I, I went for a walk. I found them at a table and I sat beside them. And they looked so strange to me. I thought so anyway. But then obviously the other way around the same. But I sat beside them, I talked to them, they said, thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. So I, I found out one of the guys, his name was Sean. That's a good name, isn't it? Sean, S-H-O-N. Sean and Malik. And I discovered it was their birthdays. I think they were cousins. And so one of them, his mother ran an orphanage in Malawi. I thought, my goodness, I would never have found that out for a start. So they came because it was their birthday. So they said, we're on a traveling mission. So I said, where are you going next? They said, oh, we're going to uh, Ethiopia next week. I said, I'll be in Ethiopia next week. What dates are you there? So I made an arrangement to meet them when I would go to Ethiopia the week after. God had set me up. And I have discovered now that God is doing that continually. But I have to stop my chariot. See, the biggest challenge is this for us. I always heard messages on evangelism. Go out and tell the lost they need Jesus. But God loves them more than you will ever love them. So he is just one step ahead of you continually. So young people, your friends in school, God already loves them. And he will set up times when you can talk about him to them. Now, there are some. I, I got, when I got saved, a, a young lad got saved after me who was radical. When I was 16 years old, he got saved around that time. And he would stand up in the front of my class in our free periods. And he did this once. He started telling everybody about Jesus in the class. And then he said, and now Kingsley's going to pray for you. And he sat down. <laughs> that was a tough one. And I did actually do it. But I've discovered today that God has got Jehonadabs all along the road. Now, my testimony will be different from yours. I have a disadvantage and an advantage. My advantage is I can talk to people who I will never meet again in the rest of my life, probably. But the big disadvantage I have is that I cannot bring them to church with me. I cannot stop somebody in the street and say, will you come with me? Because I'm not going to be there. And sometimes I wish it wasn't like that. Because the local church is God's greatest tool in the kingdom. 
So I want to encourage you this evening is to be observant in our fast society. Don't run along your road so quickly that you can't stop and listen to the lady in the, in the checkout or the person, I'm not saying you should witness in a toilet. Somebody had put a wolf whistle on my, my, um, my phone once. Somebody put a wolf whistle on my, on my phone. And I went to the toilet and it went off and I was standing beside a guy and I was so embarrassed. I, I, I just said, Lord, I'm getting rid of that one. So don't witness in toilets, all right? But one thing that I've started doing on my travels, sorry, that's, don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> when I pass through airports, so you can yeah, catch up here. I'm past the toilet. Yeah, I know. When I travel through airports, yeah, get that out of your mind. You need to wipe your mind in Jesus' name. Okay. When, when I pass through an airport and I see a lady or a gentleman who are cleaning the toilets, I always go up to them and say thank you. And it's amazing the opportunities that God gives. If I recognize a Ghanaian voice, I can say hello to them in Ghanaian. And then a whole opportunity opens for me. We've got to change our way of thinking. We've got to watch out for the people standing by the side of the road. Because I can promise you, if you're willing to stop your chariot, God will have set every one of them up for you. It's not like he does it for some people and doesn't do it for others. He's doing it continually. If only we'd open our, our eyes. I sat on one flight last year. It was wonderful. I had a, a, an Orthodox, Greek Orthodox guy beside me. Another American, he was flying to Dubai or somewhere. His family lived, I think, in Costa Rica. And he was an old man. So I asked him about himself. And he told me he was born in Bethlehem. So I said, I know somebody else who was born in Bethlehem. <laughs> It was, I think I maybe told some of you this before. I took out my Gideon New Testament. I carried them with me. And I, I, I gave him my Gideon New Testament. I always carry two with me. And uh, I pray God give me the person to give this to. And this man put his boarding cards. I watched him as he turned to the Psalms. And his eyes just lit up as he looked at the Scriptures. God will set you up every day. So stop your chariot. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Kingsley. It is so important that we recognize what people do in the everyday things of life when they serve us. A few weeks ago, I was sitting outside the church with, with William, one of our members. He was waiting for a lift from his son. So we sat there for a while. Beautiful sunshine. Put two, two seats outside the church. And then suddenly there were police cars everywhere. Up the road, down the road, into this area, down to the end of the estate, and then back again. And then the car stopped, and it was a police sergeant. And William's uh, son came and, and took him away. And uh, I said to the sergeant, uh, he, he knew that I was a chaplain working with the police. But I said to him, could I just say something to you? 
as a member of this community. I really value you and your colleagues. And what you do to serve our communities. He said, Andy, no one ever says that to us. I said, well, I want to say it to you and to your team. He said, I'll be back in the office tomorrow. And I'll be briefing my team. I'm going to pass on that message to them from you. Just a small thing, really. We've been sharing that today. Just a small, small thing. Amen. 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 So we're inspired. What a great message. Amen. (laughs) You have been such a blessing, those from Family of God leading the worship. It's been wonderful. And who has enjoyed the young people today? They've been fantastic. And they're going to come now and, uh, and lead us in worship. Thank you.
every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. So break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It's quite all right to get excited tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Just a few things I'd like to do this evening. Um, 
to recognize one or two people and one or two groups of people. Just thank you to all those who prepared the food for us today. And those who missed the first part of this meeting because they were clearing up outside, we appreciate that. And I'm looking around, I don't know whether I'm going to be successful. Uh, Julia's still here. Julia, Julia. Julia, this? May have gone back to Cardiff, but uh, uh, Julia has had some back problems, or she would have been uh, with us uh, for the whole of today. And she's interpreted for us on previous occasions. So, Julia, if this has been recorded and you see this, we just want to say thank you to you. All right. <laughs> and we'd like to pray for Julia, wouldn't we? We've just been experiencing today so many things we've heard of the miraculous. Do you know, little, um, uh, little Nicholas was clapping and joining in the service. This was the little boy who they said his life would not be worth living. Let him die. And it was just beautiful to, to see him here today and his pictures on the back on the board there, on the notice board, our miracle baby with his sister. Okay, but um, with all that we've heard of the miraculous, let's pray for Julia now, can we, together? Yes, Father God, you are the healer, and you've never changed. You're the same today. Forgive us when we forget that you are God of miracles now. We pray for Julia that the same Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead would quicken that spinal column. Every bone, every ligament, every muscle, and restore Julia to full health and strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just appreciate Julia came from uh, Cardiff to be with us this afternoon. Appreciate that. We have uh, oh, many friends here tonight. I just would like to introduce one or two of the ministries to you. I'm looking for... Looking for Patrice? Patrice, where are you? There you are. I thought you were over there. Come on. Patrice leads uh, evangelism to Chinese students and to Chinese professionals. Americans. Americans. Filipinos, Chinese, English, Welsh, Irish, Russian. Last time I got into trouble because I said, anyone else? And they didn't respond. Then they blamed me for not mentioning the Americans and the Filipinos. So anyway, did you get that? That's okay. Patrice, yeah. Where are you from originally? I'm from Taiwan, actually. So Taiwanese. <laughs> Chinese, Taiwanese. Yeah. Where did you come to the UK? Where did I come? When? Oh, 2006. Yeah, I came to study uh, my master program. No, magister. And what did you do afterwards when you finished the master? Because that is the program. I'll take this. Um, after my master program, I joined an apprenticeship scheme of a British church. 
к одной церкви, как бы там. So basically I've been two years of slave for church. То есть два года я рабствовал в церкви. Yeah, there's a joke among the apprentices. Есть такая шутка среди тех, кто вот в такой же схеме были. We know every chairs of the church by name. Мы знаем вот каждый стул по именам. Because every day we need to swap them around. Потому что нам каждый день надо их переставлять. Yeah, for small groups, для for mom and toddler groups, for Sunday для, churches, для воскресных, for Bible studies, for AA meetings. The list can go on. И вот список может продолжаться. And what are you doing right now? Um, at the moment, I am um, evangelizing. Evangelizing. <laughs> Some Chinese, mainly Chinese students. Um, but Chinese students come from many places. Malaysia, China, um, Taiwan, Hong Kong. So it's actually uh, like a mini international church. And as you might notice, there are some political upheavals around Hong Kong and China, Taiwan and China. So it's very interesting recently. <laughs> but, yeah. where, where are you working, Patrice? Where? Um, I work in Bristol for five to six years now. Um, from last year or the previous year, I couldn't remember. For these two years, we've uh, increased a branch in Bath. Yeah, so um, there have been two universities in Bristol, two universities in Bath. Patrice, thank you. I want to say something about Patrice. As she goes, you can go if you like. <laughs> she runs these evangelistic Bible studies. I think it was last year you started and not one in the group was a Christian, apart from you. And by the end of the year, Everyone had come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is an amazing lady. It's an absolutely amazing lady. Wow. Well, I'm going to very quickly get Graham uh, out. Graham and Christine, would you come as well, Chris? Come on. You'll be able to breathe. These are just quick sound bites, okay? Very, very quick. But just want to acknowledge Graham and Christine. They have run the Bath Christian Festival for several years in Bath. Uh, if you can come through this way without... This is Spaghetti Junction. I thought it was up somewhere near Birmingham, but are you okay there? Just don't move. Um, they've been running the Bath Christian Festival, which has touched the lives of many, many people. And they've also worked among marginalized people in, uh, in Bath. Now there won't be a Bath Christian Festival in 2020. You're going to go, ah. But how would you feel about a Christian festival in Bristol? Now, when you just cheered, you were promising you'd help with it and be there. Yes? Mike, I think you have a problem. All your folk are saying yes, and you're just sitting there <laughs> looking quite animated. <laughs> well, um, praise God. Let's, let's just say that we're exploring that. And uh, it will be wonderful to do something of that nature in Bristol. So, please pray. I'm just going to ask for a quick testimony from these two. Christine, when did you become a Christian? Um, 1977. Uh, how did that happen? 
Um, well, I went along to hear Peter Scoven, the evangelist Peter Scoven. Yes. And he was preaching the gospel, and I responded, went forward, and gave my life to the Lord. Wonderful. Right. And how long have you been married to this man here? 45 years. 45 years. And you're looking so young. I'm doing my best to embarrass you. Okay, now, how come you have a passion for sharing the gospel with people, Graham Duke? Why is that? Well, I became a Christian in 77, six months before Christine. Got involved at a, a group of Christians. They were moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. But the church I was in wasn't. So they became my oversight. I learned a lot about the Spirit and about Jesus from them. But many groups that are on their own can become elitists. And that's what happened there. And I got wrongly discipled. And um, I went along, and Christine, to some extent, went along with, with the teaching. And, and uh, I had to come out of that and had to unlearn uh, a lot of things. And uh, in the process of that, I had to do a lot of repenting. And uh, after that time of repentance and relearning, God birthed in me an evangelism uh, ministry. And I was absolutely amazed and bowled over at the amount of grace that was shown towards me given uh, what I'd been involved in. And once um, you receive that level of grace, in other words, God actually showed me what was ahead of me spiritually, and I experienced the place of wailing and gnashing of teeth. And when that conviction comes on you, you don't know where to put yourself. You don't know where to go. There's, there would be in eternity no escape. But I called out to Jesus. And said, enough! And it ceased. Now after me experiencing that, how am I not going to go onto the streets and everywhere else and tell people about what Jesus has done for them and what they need? And that's why I have a passion for the gospel. We've run it for five years in Bath. Uh, and the people of Bristol have come, home, come over and faithfully supported it. Now it's time to come to Bristol. And we're going to look into the ba Bristol and West International Christian Festival. And maybe we can see some of these young people raise the profile of <laughs> worship in the center of Bristol. <laughs> and see some of the kingdom of God descend. 
You've got testimonies. You've been through stuff. And there are people out there suffering and they haven't got Jesus and they need to hear your testimonies. God bless you all. Graham, thank you. Thank you, Graham. Woo! Do you know it's a, a risky thing to hand a microphone to a preacher, isn't it? Very <laughs> risky thing. <laughs> Dare I do it again? It's just for a very, very short time. While many of us were praying and praying and praying, Back in the time when the Soviet Union was persecuting Christians, there was a young man going out to some of those places to encourage brothers and sisters. Tony Packer. fun with the young people and you wonder why I've got the world we should have coming up on the screen we should have coming up on the screen not only that but my website address so if you want to know my full story then it's on there uh, a 30 minute testimony I'm going to embarrass some of you young people. Hands up, hands up those of you who are 20 to 24. Oh, Nobody? Let me tell you this. God, when God calls you, you do not know where you're going to go. God called me and I ended up in the communist world. I've experienced the watchtowers. I've experienced the machine guns. I've experienced the minefields. To take the Bibles into all the communist countries. There was not a border that could hold me. But God was going before. And why I ask if there was any 24 year old people here? When I was 24, I already had a 15 year prison sentence passed on me in a communist country. But God miraculously overruled. But they could not keep me out from the communist world. Today, I still go back to the communist world. And I encourage young people like yourself to walk the walk and keep your eyes fixed on him. In Serbia this year, we had young people out on the streets for the first time. With bookstores like we have at the back. And people were coming and eagerly asking questions about Jesus. This little booklet, and quite quickly I'll finish now, is printed in so many Slavic languages. And a person came from one village to a market town. They read this booklet. And within a week, the whole family gave their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe it, when we were singing that hymn just now, were you really believing it or were you going along with the music? 
То есть, когда вот вы пели вот эти песни, идет из сердца или просто вот следуя за музыкой? Do you believe that God breaks the chains? Yeah. I tell you, God is working. Бог действует. In Hungary next year. В Венгрии в следующем году. Over 50,000 of these copies will be printed in Hungarian. And they will be given out to all the students of the universities. And before it happens, we're praying that God will work money miracles. And you've got a country here representing Russia and Latvia. And you look at me and you think I'm a nice man. <laughs> but, the Russian, but the Russian government think differently. I'm classified as an undesirable. But the Christians in Russia are praying that in two years' time, on my 80th birthday, that we will be in Russia giving these tracks out on the streets of Russia. In case you didn't know, we have just had the permission and the licenses from the government to print the DVDs of the Jesus film and these booklets and many other booklets to give out to distribute right across Russia. I'm just warming up, but I've just had my Serbian in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it wonderful to... Yeah. I just love young people like Tony. That's right, yeah. He's a little bit older than me. So I'm going to do my best to keep him young. It's, it's good, good insurance for me. Tony, bless you. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Just wanted you to know some of the people here tonight. We can't introduce everyone. But just wanted you to know some of the people who are here with us. Uh, now, Fraser, I've got you down for tomorrow night. Is that okay? For tomorrow night, that's great. Going to share testimony tomorrow night. We had one of the guys, we had Elizabeth sharing about Teen Challenge this afternoon. Come on, share a little bit of your story, please, Debbie. Debbie, yes. Give you a few minutes. Um, grew up in a Christian home. Rebelled and walked away from God. Fourteen years ago, God drew me back. He had a plan, a purpose for my life, like everybody's life. But I had no idea what it was. I volunteered with Teen Challenge Belfast. Every week for eight years. I was a company accountant for 20 years. And six years ago, my world fell apart. Six years ago, my world fell apart. <laughs> it collapsed. Um, but we know that God is near to the brokenhearted. And in that time, God gave me a verse, Psalm 27, 13. Psalm 27:13. I would have despaired had I not believed. 
had I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And Daniel 11:36 says, "The people who know their God will be strong and do great exploits." Not because we are strong, but because He is strong. And he is able. And he um, called a company accountant to go full time um, into full time ministry in Teen Challenge. I got that call when I was sitting on a beach. Seeking his face. Asking him what he wanted me to do. Draw, draw near. God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. When the call came, I knew it was off God. Because he had prepared me through his word. I left Northern Ireland and I came here. And I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what city I was going to. But I've ended up, I've gone to four different cities. God has sent me to four different cities so far. As I said earlier, to lift with guys that used to be trapped in addiction. And take the gospel message of hope, the gospel message of hope to the most broken. Yeah. We know that that hope is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have that hope to take out, thankfully. I just want to finish with this. Um, last week I, I was asked a question is it worth being here? Because sometimes you may think that it's, it's, it should be about the hundreds and you want to, you want to see hundreds saved. Um, but I, I, whenever I was asked this question, I believe it was from God, and I just, I want to just give you a couple of wee names. Is Haley worth it? Haley, a girl called Haley. Um, she wept, thinking she was worthless. Being able, to, being able to tell her that she was worth dying for. Drug dealer um, hanging out of a window would only speak to us through a window. Feeling hopelessly trapped in his guilt. After months of speaking to him through the window, he gave his life to the Lord. I have loads of names. But, but my point is that Christ came for the one, the one, the one. We had a picnic the other day, and some of these guys sat with us, they had their alcohol, we had our tea and coffee and ham sandwiches, but Jesus sat with sinners, and, and, he, and he loved them, and he loved them. 
Um, so, and, uh, um, but I was just reading about how he leaves the 99 to seek that one, to go after that one. And we need to go out. And, and, and yes, it can be in our workplace. And, and people, sorry. <laughs> But you near, you draw near to God. And he will show you where to go. He will show you who's behind that closed door. We have another guy, Jeff. We knocked his door. And it's usually just to invite them out, tell them we're there for them. But he asked for help. He hadn't been out of that estate for 16 years. <laughs> Came to the church for the first time in his life last week. God's moving. And sometimes you can you can become weary in doing good. But you gotta keep going. You've got to be the light. You've got to carry that hope that's within you. We have another guy, sorry, can't help it. <laughs> another guy who's become a friend of ours, lives in a tent. Comes to every service going now. Keeps coming out. God's drawing him. With loving kindness, God is drawing him. So yeah, I just encourage you just to keep going, keep going. Serving in the breakfast club, keep going, keep going. You're, with loving kindness, I've drawn thee. God will draw these guys with loving kindness, working through you. People who have never heard the gospel. We can be that gospel message of hope, that one person that they see that loves them. So the people who know their God will be strong and do great exploits. Amen. I think we're learning today that um, we have to win some by all means. And uh, we've heard a lot about the workplace, about making contact with people. By all means to win some. Debbie, your team are just over halfway through six months. What she's telling you about is what's happened in Bristol in three months' time, just in three months. And I think that's really wonderful how God is using them. And uh, And Fraser, Daryl, you wouldn't be here tonight if someone hadn't got out on the streets in a different city. We thank God for that. So, praise God. Amen. Woo! Well, we're going to receive an offering. I think Nicolee's going to come and uh, just lead us in, in one song. We want to bless the, the guys in the ministries represented here uh, today. We want to bless them, so we're receiving an offering. And while we're just waiting for Nicolee to get ready and for the, uh, those who are taking the offering to get ready, um, there's someone here today who's worked harder than anyone else, who has worked harder than anyone else. Have you any idea who that might be? Come on, Martinez. Martinez.
We own the name again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We all know you deserve the glory. Let's give him praise. <clears throat> and stand if you want. You deserve the glory.
Thank you, Nicolee. Tony Packer's going to give us, uh, sorry, Ray. Where's Tony? Tony gone now? I think he has had a slip away. Ray's going to give us just a couple of minutes. We want you to take away at least one free gift today. We want everyone to take away a free gift today. We wanted to take away a free gift today. We wanted to take away a free gift today. There's around three and a half thousand people serving the Lord with Operation Mobilization today. То есть есть вот одна такая служение, операция, мобилизация. If you're looking for a month or a year or longer, то есть если там есть вот the start the start of the journey could just be to fill in a little form like this, and then God will lead you. То есть вы можете просто заполнить этот лифлет, и Бог потом дальше будет уже вас вести. These are on the stand right at the back there. То есть там в конце вы можете найти этот лифлет. We've talked a lot tonight about praying. То есть мы говорили сегодня много о молитве. Operation World, you can pray for every country in the world. То есть вот в этой книге есть написаны нужды конкретные за каждую страну. It's a big book, but the good news is that you don't have to read the whole book to pray for the world. То есть это толстая книга, но вам не надо прочитать всю эту книгу, чтобы молиться за страну. То есть там есть конкретные молитвенные нужды для каждой страны. И вот мы предлагаем, чтобы вы могли вот это приобрести за один фунт. Увидимся. To Tony and for uh, Ray for being with us today and for sharing. Appreciate you both. We're going to take you back 2,000 years. Pastor Mike Safri, and when Mike has finished what he's going to do, I'm going to ask that Freddie come straight away afterwards. Just take your time, Freddie, and share with us tonight. Mike. No, I did not slip him a fiver. <laughs> oh, do me a favour. Look, it's all in line with tradition, isn't it? Yeah, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, remember? And the governor releasing as a prisoner of your crowd's choice. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> Listen, Mum, for your information, right, I was not the only one doing stir, actually. No. Yeah, well, this was the amazing thing, right? See, this other geezer I was in with, he'd only been brought in the night before. Any anyway, mum, you know, I get to talking to him, trying to suss out what it is he's been nicked for. I tell you, mum, for the life of me, I can't work it out. I mean, this guy, right, he's as honest as the day is long. So, of course, I think that's it, don't I? You know, me for the job and him going walkies. But it's like he could tell what I was thinking. Yeah. Anyway, guess what he said? Do you mind... You need to wash your mouth out, you do. Look, you just shut up for a minute. This is important. Thank you. Well, like I said, you know, there's me thinking as how it's him who's going to be getting out and me who's going to be getting it. But 
he just looks at me. And he tells me not to worry. He says it's all been planned in advance. And then he starts saying how it's him who's going to be getting it, which is just as well for me, because it's, I can get sorted out. And sure enough, Mum, what happened this morning, but they took him off up the hill. He knew, Mum. He knew. All I could think about was how it should have been me. Well, the thing is, Mum, right? Look, I know I've tried to go straight before. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It hasn't worked out, I know. But I just feel like it's going to be different this time, Mum. I feel like I owe it to him, you know? Boy, you never know what's coming next in this place, do you? I'm going to clear some space so I don't kick anything, all right? Boo. Let's just pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for reminding us what it cost. Would you speak through your servant tonight? Would you speak to your children tonight? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This has been good, I tell you. And I, I promise you, I'm not going to take long just because I have to drive home tonight. So I should finish, about, should finish about two or three, something like that. No, I'm kidding. I, every time... Um, I come to a place, I'm looking to hear what God wants to say. And he always has a way of encouraging us, doesn't he? And I think he wants to encourage all of us tonight. We always, we always hear when we do things wrong, don't we? We always hear when we don't do enough, don't we? But I think sometimes we need to know that, that we're okay. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to take you on a little journey and see where we come, yeah? Um, every year we have a time of prayer and fasting. Ch two churches of ours, we get together at the beginning of the year in January. And once again, I, when I say things like that, I try to be very, very careful what I'm about to say. Because I never like to give the impression that I'm something greater than anyone else. Do you know what I mean? I think sometimes we can... Preachers can give the impression that they're higher than everyone else. You get me? But I can assure you that God speaks to us all the time. In 2014, while we were praying, I had a very strong impression that in two years' time, something really crazy was going to happen. And I'm very careful with these things, right? So, so I told everyone, I said, I just sense in my spirit that in, in two years' time, 
there's going to be some major changes in all of us. The next year in 2015, I had the same impression again. And then six months before the end of the year, I had the same thing again. Sometimes you think, is this just me or is, is this, what is this, you know, that kind of thing. When 2016 came, it was one of the most crazy years that I've ever experienced. I, I can't tell you everything that happened because we don't have the time. But I want you to know that there were three things that I found very significant. The first thing that was really surprising was 2016 was the year that we voted to come out of the European Union. I was shocked. Because this has, as you know, this is all that we're talking about now on the radio, television, everything. The second thing that really shocked me was that Donald Trump became the president of the United States. I just thought, boy, this can, can't get any crazier than this, right? And all these are public things that everyone could see, right? But there was something else that happened to me personally in 2016. To my complete surprise, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I had no symptoms at all. And it's, I won't go through all the details. But it was absolutely crazy. God's, God's grace was absolutely amazing. And on the 5th of November, they removed my prostate gland completely. I'm not kidding you. If You could hardly tell that anything happened to me. Um, that when I was in the hospital, they were looking at me thinking, so why are you here? Yeah. And it, and it was quite an amazing uh, it was quite an amazing time for me I'm very very busy and I almost never get any time to stop I was off for a month <laughs> that's a miracle trust me right? why am I telling you this Sometimes we ask ourselves, why are these things happening to us? I, I listened to our brother's testimony about his eyes. And one of the things that comes up is, God, what are you doing? Why, why is this happening to me? Or what's going on? Is that what you think sometimes? Do you ever go through difficulties? Yeah. I want to encourage you with something. I'm going to put this on the board. I'm going to share something with you because God has been speaking to us as a church about the wilderness. I, I hope you don't mind me moving, right? Do I have to stay still? Okay. Because I have a tendency. I, I feel at home now, so I can just cruise. I might bother you on the front row. I hope you don't mind too much, right? We've been talking about the wilderness. I want to talk to you about from redemption to sanctification, okay? Bear with me and we'll see where we go, okay? I'm going to try to be as quickly as I can. Do you ever get discouraged when you try to live the Christian life? Sometimes, yeah? Does that look like you? Ever feel like giving up? Yeah? If so, then what I'm about to tell you, I think, hopefully, will encourage you, okay? And I want to start by saying, if you fall, or if you make a mistake, get up and keep going. Isn't that something? Did somebody just say that a minute ago? Huh? 
You would think that I set it up, huh? Well, we didn't. We didn't, okay? Don't miss what God has for you, okay? Now, let's go a little bit further, okay? I want to give you a little bit of history so you know where I'm coming. At the beginning of the book of Exodus, you might remember that the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt. Remember that? By the way, I stick pictures up so you remember. And I write it on the board so you can see it, okay? Yeah. All right? And then God raised up this man called Moses. Now, he didn't actually look like that. <laughs> But I thought it was good for it. It's better than putting Charlton Heston up there in case some of you know. Okay? So God raised up this man. And if you remember, through the Passover, the people were saved from bondage. You remember that? И вот во время Пасхи они были освобождены от этого рабства. Remember the blood on the doorposts and things like that? Okay. And then, look at them. Don't they look happy? This, this is the children of Israel leaving Egypt, right? There was great joy. You might remember that. Now, what happens next? How many of you have ever seen the movie, The Ten Commandments? Кто-нибудь видел 10 заповедей фильм? Don't believe it. Не верьте в него. Don't ever believe Hollywood renditions because they leave bits out and they add bits, right? Не верьте в это, потому что им надо создать драм. If you want to know the truth, read the book. Если вы хотите знать настоящую историю, прочитайте Библию. Now, in the next part of this book, we're able to see the way that God takes these people from slavery and bondage and makes them a holy people, right? You can read it. You can read it right to them and translate it however you. That's exactly what I just said. То есть в книге дальше описано, что Бог берет людей, освобождает от рабства и делает их святыми людьми, угодными для служения. Okay. Now, I want to look at three aspects of salvation and bear with me. То есть три аспекта есть в спасении. The first thing is what we call redemption. То есть первое это спасение, искупление. Потом посвящение. This is deep, huh? And the third one is glorification. И посвящение. All right. Those are the three words that we're going to look at. Прославление. Okay? All right. Прославление. Okay. All right. This is quick. I'm going to go really fast. То есть искупление. This is the definition of 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 uh, redemption. It means the act of saving or being saved, particularly this one. You can read the second one in particular. The action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. То есть описание спасения это приобрести, вернуть что-то назад через выкуп или покрытие долга. So when I redeem something, I bought it back. То есть, когда я искупаю, я покупаю это назад. Иногда можете в магазинах есть такое, чтобы выкупить. Иисус искупил нас. Он спас нас. Он покрыл наши долги. Это было классно, вот эта сценка с телефоном. У меня надо повторить тоже в воскресном служении. Вам следующее оправдание. То есть это провозглашение что-то правильное в глазах Бога. И также вот это действие Бога okay. на человечество. И потому что наши грехи покрыты, мы okay. оправданы. Redemption is the act, justification is the result. Искупление это действие, а оправдание это результат. God redeems me, and because of that, I'm justified. Uh, how many of you have the Bible on your computer or in a book, right? Кто из вас имеет Библию вот в книжном формате? If you look at the margins, both sides are even. Вот границы они одинаковые. That's because if you have a computer, you press the justifying button, 
and it makes everything straight. Normally when you type, it goes like this, right? On one side. But when you justify, it's all straight. То есть есть функция выравнивания, которая выравнивает текст и разглаживает, чтобы он формировал красивую ровную колонку. То есть за счет искупления мы выровняем. То есть вот что происходит. То есть Бог идет, чтобы right. спасти свой народ. They didn't do anything. До того момента люди ничего the, не сделали. Do you remember the plagues and all that stuff? And the death of the firstborn? What were the children of Israel doing? Sitting watching TV, right? Well, <laughs> not есть, exactly. Когда вот эти все кары на э, Егип, египтян сходили, при этом израильтяне не делали ничего, они могли телек дома смотреть. Okay, so bear with me now, okay? Now, this was a picture or a type of what happens to us. И вот это отображает, что происходит в жизни каждого верующего. God acted through Jesus to save us, and we didn't do anything. Бог через Иисуса Христа спас нас от греха, от зла, от ошибок, а мы при этом ничего не сделали. That's pretty cool, huh? Так круто, да? All right. Now, there's something else. This is called glorification. I've skipped. To the last one, glorification. Освящение. Okay, that's a nice person. Прославление. Being made into something different. Okay, it means to give honor, to give high praise, but it means particularly to give glory, or in other words, to be made glorified. Right. То есть прославление это значит чтобы. When you're made glorified, you shine. Дать славу чтобы прославить. The Bible says a woman's hair is her glory. The Bible says a woman's hair is her glory. It makes her shine. A woman's hair makes her shine. Right? Ladies. Right? То есть у женщин слава это волосы, да? I can't do that. Я не могу этого делать. Yeah, I just cut it off. You know, I'm BBC. You know that, right? You know what BBC is? Ball by choice. No. Anyway, right? Okay. This is when all those who belong to Jesus will be finally transformed. So, at the beginning, we're redeemed and we're made right. When we finally die or when Jesus comes back, we're going to get a new body. We're going to be whoo! Right? Got that? Да. То есть мы видим процесс от прощения, искупления до прославление вот этого нового тела, прославленного тела. Just a couple of verses. It says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We should not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That should be at the front of every one of our nurseries, shouldn't it? No, that's a bad joke, actually. No, it doesn't mean literally sleeping, right? It means we're not going to die, but we're all going to be changed. Yeah, can I keep going? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, At the last trumpet, for the, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. При звуке трубы будет воскресенные мертвые, и мы будем измененными. No more arthritis. Нет больше артрита. No more cancer. Нет больше рака. No more buck teeth. Нет больше No more bogies in the nose. Нет больше you name it, it ain't gonna be there. сопли. Okay? God will eventually change our corrupt bodies into something different, right? То есть Бог конечно изменит наши тела. You don't do anything for that to happen. И при этом мы не делаем ничего для этого. You don't have to sit in fertilizer. Тебе не надо быть где-то там. God's gonna do that. So, we get redeemed, we had nothing to do with it. То есть мы искуплены, и мы не участвуем. И мы изменены, и тоже при этом не участвуем. То есть он совершил все. То есть от искупления до прославления есть посвящение, освящение. This is the potter. You see that one there? That's the, the potter 
and the clay. We're the clay, and he's the potter. То есть мы видим горшочник делает из глины сосуд. Sanctification is the act or process of acquiring sanctity or becoming or being made holy. То есть посвящение это акт, когда что-то становится святым. So God is making us holy. То есть Бог сейчас совершает нас святыню. First of all, what's the difference between justification or redemption and sanctification? Какая разница между оправданием и посвящением? Okay. Does that look scary? Это выглядит ужасно. Justification is the work of God. То есть оправдание это работа Бога. God does what you are unable to do. То есть Бог делает то, что мы не можем сделать. You are declared righteous. Он провозглашает, что мы праведны. Tomorrow, если бы королев... То есть, если бы королева приняла mm-hmm. меня в свою семью, я бы сразу стал старцем каким-то oh, особым. Yeah. Well, um, я бы таким важным вот таким. I have a brother named Charles, so yeah. Right? I'd be instantly, wouldn't I? Instantly. However, I'd still be Freddie, wouldn't I? Yeah. In fact, if the queen adopted me immediately, the first thing she would do is take me to somewhere to buy some new clothes, some tweed, wouldn't she? То есть, если бы королева меня усыновила, она бы первая вещь купила бы новые вещи. Ты не можешь быть царственной особой и ходить в джинсах никогда. And then she would take me to elocution classes, wouldn't she? И она также даст мне определенное обучение. That's where you learn to speak the queen's English. То есть, чтобы меня научить говорить правильному королевскому английскому. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for right. It was accounted for him. Abraham didn't do anything. То есть Авраам поверил, и это вменилось ему в праведность. Therefore, having been justified by faith, being made right, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Much more than having been made justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath to him. So back to this one. We're justified by faith, by trusting. That's all it is. We get peace with God for nothing. То есть мы оправданы через веру, через доверие Богу. Okay. Uh, we're, we get saved from wrath for nothing. Okay. Мы спасены от гнева Божьего за ничто. But sanctification is the process of being made into the image of Jesus. Но посвящение это вот освящение, это вот процесс, когда ты становишься похожим на Иисуса Христа. God works with you to produce Christ's character in you. То есть Бог работает с тобой, чтобы в тебе взрастить из характер Христа. That's where the problem comes. Вот здесь трудность приходит. Have you ever asked the question, why is it that you can have these preachers who can heal people, and then you find out that they've been sleeping with their secretary for two years? То есть бывают, к сожалению, такие вещи, что человек может исцелять больных и при этом спать со своей секретаршей. То есть дар Божий, он не требует покаяния. Твое, те дары, которые ты имеешь, и твой характер, это две разные вещи, они не связаны. Я думаю, все знают, что Майкл Джексон был невероятно талантливым человеком, не вы сказали? Много, конечно, кто может признать, что Майкл Джексон был одаренным человеком. Но это не сделало его хорошим человеком. Его таланты не значат, что ты хороший. То есть твои дары — это то, к чему ты призван, что ты должен делать. Но твой характер — это кто ты. That's why this verse suddenly makes sense. I never understood it before. Поэтому вот сейчас вот это имеет 
вот это место, оно как-то получает смысл. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Wait a minute, I thought I was saved already. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying, you've got something to work, it's got to, we've got to see it. And watch the next verse. То есть Павел говорит, совершайте со страхом свое спасение. То есть Бог действует в тебе, но тебе надо приложиться, чтобы это совершилось. И вот, вот это здесь вот и проявляется, эта борьба. We, we saved, Мы все были спасены, но мы борьбы. Но вот мы встречаемся like с трудностями, чтобы превращаться в Христа. Моисей оставил Египет. Him, но когда они увидели его, они думали, он египтянин. Like потому что он ходил как египтянин. Like он говорил как египтянин. Like И он был одет как египтянин. So Поэтому ему надо было одеть новые другие. Yes, right. Ему надо было поменять характер его речи. То есть оправдание, оно сразу происходит, когда ты принимаешь Иисуса Христа и через крещение, оно как печать. Это знание спасения, оно не имеет ничего с моим верой. See, that's, why it's, that's why it's important to have a preacher as your interpreter, right? Yeah? Okay. Now, sanctification happens over time because it is not the work of God alone. You are involved. Посвящение — это освящение. Duh! Это постепенный процесс. Он не за, не, это не за один день происходит. Now I'm beginning to understand the difficulty. You see? И сейчас мы можем видеть, в чем трудность. Вот все трудности, с которыми я сталкиваюсь, помогают мне быть более и более похожим на Христа. То есть, если бы я не сталкивался с этими трудностями, я бы не узнал, насколько благ Господь ко мне. We must submit to His will, strive to become holy, resist sin, but all through Him. Yeah. То есть кто оправдан в Боге, он должен сотрудничать с Богом. Мы должны отдаться Его воле и трудиться, чтобы быть святыми, противостоять греху. Но все это через Него, вместе с Ним. That's the struggle that you and I have been having. Вот, вот эта трудность, через которую мы проходим этот узкий путь. Because that's why we go, why do I have these thoughts or why am I going through this stuff? Yeah? But the fruit, notice this. We always quote this verse, but I don't think we get it. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, etc., right? Uh, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. То есть, плод Духа, это есть праведность, мир, святость, любовь. То есть, много кто из нас неправильно понимает этот стих. These things are fruit. То есть, это плод того, что мы сораспяты со Христом. To mature. Чтобы нам... The Bible says that there's a seed planted in us. То есть есть семя посеянное. The Holy Spirit puts His seed in us. Дух Святой сеет семя в нас. But you gotta water it, right? It got a little, a rain, a little bit of rain has to come. И вот должен дождь прийти, чтобы. The occasional lightning bolt. 
right? But in all of that, we, ev we eventually bear fruit. Но через вот эти процессы мы начинаем приносить плод. So you first became a Christian, you get saved, and then you find out a swear word comes out. You go, oh, I'm not a Christian anymore. То есть ты стал крестьянином, ты принял спасение, вдруг ты Ну, конечно, ни одному из вас здесь ничего такого похожего не происходит. Но то, что ты заметил это, то, что тебя это затронуло, это значит тебе Божья жизнь, потому что раньше ты даже не придавал внимания этому. По мере yeah. роста, то есть самообладание, оно начинает проявляться, становиться so says, плодом. То okay? okay? есть освящение это также быть отделенным. Some verses speak of God's people being already sanctified because God has already set them apart. So it also means to be set apart, right? То есть в некоторых местах мы можем прочитать, что Божий народ, он уже отделен, уже освящен. So То есть те, которые освящены уже, освящены во Христе, а призваны называться святыми. It says, and such as some of you, the verse before that talks about uh, uh, neither fornicators nor adulterers, etc., etc., will enter the kingdom of God. And then it says, and such for some of you, you were like that too. It says, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were, you were washed, God washed you, and then he sets you apart, he puts you over here for special use, right? И то есть Бог здесь вот говорит, там вот в предыдущем, там говорится о разных грехах, и говорит, вы тоже такими были, но Бог вас омыл, Он очистил вас, и Он отделил вас, Он, он поставил вас в отдельности. Те места говорят о том, что берется сосуд и ставится в отдельности. Okay. From the book of Exodus, chapter 15, all the way to the end of Deuteronomy, we are 15, watching God deal with his people. То есть uh, с 15 главы Исхода и вот вся, вся книга Второзакония, где to, Бог работает со своим народом. And they have to go through the wilderness. И им надо в это right. время проходить через пустыню. That's where we are right now, I believe. И вот мы находимся там. I believe that so many of God's people God is taking us through in order to get us to where he wants us to be. All right? Что Бог проводит через всё это, чтобы нас готовить, нас совершать. Has been redeemed. Мы были One day we're going to be glorified. Один день мы будем прославлены. But right now he's sanctifying. Но сейчас мы проходим освящение. Now, you need to understand that in the same way he shaped the children of Israel, he's shaping you. Нам надо понять, что тот процесс, через что прошел Израиль, это мы должны каждый из нас пройти. They were a special people set apart. Они были особенный народ, отделенный народ. We can learn from everything that they did. Everything. This is really important. This is in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. All right? Can you tell them that? This is in the New Testament. Это вот в Новом Завете, вот в Первое Коринфянам написано. He says, I, don't, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses, in the cloud, and in the sea. Can you, do I need to repeat that? Or can can you go back to the slide? Mm -hmm. То есть я не хочу вас оставить, братья, неведение, что наши отцы шли под облаком, прошли через море. И они также были крещены в Моисея в облаке, okay. в море. And then it says, all ate the same spiritual food. Все они ели одну духовную пищу. All drank the same spiritual drink. И одну духовную воду. 
They drank from that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Они пили из этой духовной скалы, которая был Иисус Христос. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. Но многими Бог не был не был доволен. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Их тела были разбросаны по пустыне. And it says these things became our examples, and it, it goes on so we shouldn't lust. Say these things so became our examples. То есть вот эти вещи это как пример для нас. So they wouldn't lust. Чтобы они не, чтобы мы не были в похоти. So that they uh, they didn't become idlers. Чтобы мы не поклонялись богам другим. So they didn't commit sexual immorality. He said we don't Чтобы мы не совершали сексуальные какие-то моральные вещи. So we don't tempt Christ. Чтобы мы не искушали Христа. Or complain. How about that? Или жаловались. Same, same, same vein. These things happened to them as examples, and they were written пример. for our admonition. Это было для нас, для нашего наставления, so предупреждения. What am I saying? Так что я хочу сказать? You and I, as believers, we've been talking about evangelism and meeting people. And the problem with evangelism, if you're really serious about it, is people are going to get close to you. And when they get close to you, they might just find out that you've got, still got issues. Yeah? То есть вот евангелизация одно из таких, скажем, вещей, что люди становятся ближе к тебе, чтобы увидеть, кто ты по-настоящему, они могут увидеть, что некоторые вещи все еще есть в твоей жизни. Sometimes we're afraid to do evangelism. И может отчасти поэтому мы боимся евангелизировать. Because we know we've got issues. Потому что мы знаем те свои слабости, которые есть Мы иногда хотим делать как бы такую евангелизацию на расстоянии. Что я приглашаю их, допустим, в церкви, я говорю, Анди, ты с ними разберись. We must understand what's happening to us. То есть мы должны you, знать. If you don't understand the process that you're in, you just might be surprised and quit. То есть если мы не знаем, через что мы проходим, это нас может удивлять. If you, like, let me, let me give you a little, little bit of an example of what I mean. Some people, when they first get saved, they're very, very zealous and very excited, right? То есть многие люди после, когда только принимают спасение, не зажженные, не очень такие. Three years later, they get into a problem with a person personally. Они начинают трения какие-то между людьми. And suddenly, they lose their temper. И потом крыша съезжает. Right? And get very angry. А они нас становятся очень злыми. And then they go, oh my goodness, I must be backsliding. О, oh, я, я, наверное, отхожу от Бога, я отступник. Ты не отступник. Yeah? И если бы Бог начал бы показывать все, что в тебе еще осталось, so, ты бы убежал сразу, но Он so сейчас he, начинает это. То есть вначале Бог кормит тебя Он Then after a little while, и после какого-то времени, he stands you up and steps out of the way. Он начинает показывать тебе твою внутренность. And he says, "Come, come, 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 come." И он начинает отходить и призывать: "Иди ко мне, иди ко мне." And you go like this. А ты идешь, пока не уверена, потому что ты никогда не шел. And then just when you're about to fall, he catches you. И когда тебе кажется, что ты уже упадешь, он ловит тебя. You thought, oh, I'm falling, I must be backslidden. But God was teaching you how to walk the whole time. Yeah. But if you don't know, you'll be surprised. How many of you have ever been in a sauna? You ever been in a sauna? Yeah? A sauna? You know, a sauna. Ah, sauna. Ah, кто нибудь был в бане? How many of you have ever been in a sauna? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah? Кто нибудь был в бане? I remember the first time I ever went into a sauna. 
То есть первый раз, когда я был в банке. Okay? Me, man, right? То есть я The first thing I noticed was I was in a room with a bunch of white guys that were naked, right? With a towel. Right? So it kind of felt like a Ku Klux Klan meeting. <laughs> Can you translate that? <laughs> okay. I'm being honest, okay? Is... okay? Then I'm sitting in this it was it was actually a eucalyptus sauna. Do you know what that is? Yeah. yeah. Can you translate? То есть эта баня была сделана из эвкалипта, ну с ароматом эвкалипта. So I'm sitting in this thing and the steam is everywhere and it's going up my nose and I'm feeling it in my chest and my throat. И я вот чувствую, как эти пары проникают внутрь меня. I'm not feeling this the first time, okay? Я никогда этого не переживал. And then и тогда, to my surprise, к моему удивлению, this white guy этот белый comes over, gets a bucket of water, берет э, воду and pours it on these rocks, и выливает на камни. And the steam comes up и просто пар поднимает, and hits me on my bald head. <laughs> и опускается на мою лысую голову. It feels like hell came down, right? Просто чувствуешь, как будто Now, весь а, ад спустился. Can you imagine? If I didn't know that this was supposed to be good for me, если бы я не знал, что это хорошо для меня, if if my friend here said, "Come and join me in the sauna, you're gonna love it," и если бы мой друг сказал, "And I had no idea what it was," тебе понравится баня, а я бы вообще не знал, что это. I would be thinking he's trying to kill me. Я бы подумал, он наверняка хочет убить меня. So that he could get brownie points in the Ku Klux Klan, right? А ему yeah. заплатили это куклас клан, чтобы избавиться от чернокожей. Если бы я не знал, что вот эти пары эвкалипта, чтобы очистить мои, я бы удрал оттуда. You know Но когда ты идешь в сауну, ты знаешь. You stay as long as you can. Ты сидишь in сколько heat. сможешь выдержать. You breathe heavily. Ты дышишь глубоко. And then when you can't take it any longer, и когда ты уже не можешь держать, you go out and cool yourself down, right? И Drink some water. And when I came out of that sauna, I ex- my lungs were clearer than I had ever experienced in my entire life. И после сауны вот мои легкие были чище, чем когда-либо. You see, sometimes, иногда, you're in the sauna, мы в сауне, and God's trying to clear your lungs. И Бог пытается очистить твои легкие, твои внутренние. А ты думаешь, что ты в аду. Yeah? So you're running. И ты пытаешься убежать оттуда. But God is sanctifying us. Но Бог освящает yeah? нас там. Because he wants to use us. Потому что Он хочет yeah? использовать нас. We must understand what's happening so that we are not discouraged. Does it seem to you That everything was going good, and then you got saved. Sometimes, yeah. Does that make sense? Can you translate that? То есть иногда нам может это вот как бы разбить нас, а раз как это discourage. Are we close? No, discourage. How is discourage? Разочарование, да. То есть это. I used to hear people give testimonies like this. All right. I used to hear people give testimonies like this. Я слышал вот свидетельства вот именно от людях, когда проходит такое. I used to smoke. Я курил. I used to drink. Я пил. I used to chase women. Я за женщинами бегал. And then I got saved. И Бог меня тогда спас. And it's hard. It's hard. Pray for me, brethren. Помолитесь за меня. What kind of testimony is that, right? Что это за свидетельство? But that's what it seems like. The, the more garbage you're in, the better the testimony, right? Больше мусора, тем лучше свидетельство. But sometimes it feels like this life we're in is hard. И нам может казаться, что жизнь, в которой мы живем, она сложна. Everything that's worth something costs you something. Но любая вещь, которая имеет цену, ее надо заплатить. Ценная вещь, она имеет цену. Buy a cheap car. Less money. Дешевая машина стоит меньше денег, но и разрушается быстрее. Покупай БМВ. Больше денег. Cost you a lot of money later, yes? 
То есть дешевый дом стоит дороже. You must understand what is happening to you so you don't miss all that God has for you. Когда мы знаем, что Бог совершает, тогда мы не пропускаем того, что Он хочет, и не мешаем Ему совершать. Когда вот ты в этой сауне, в бане, ты горячий, тебе хочется удрать. Do you remember Peter? Вспомни Петра. Jesus had rose from the dead. Иисус воскрес из мертвых. Didn't know what to do. What did he say? Что он сказал? I'm going fishing. А Петр сказал, я иду рыбачить. I'm going back to doing what I normally did. Я возвращаюсь к тому, чтобы чем я занимался. He could have missed it. God had to tell them to go back to where they were supposed to go and wait, didn't he? И Иисусу надо было найти его и опять дать ему то задание, которое ему было. We must understand what is happening to us so that we can allow the process to shape us. Когда мы это понимаем, мы позволяем вот этим процессом формировать нас. Мы также развиваем свою выносливость, свое терпение в трудностях. God is breaking us and shaping us for good. То есть Бог ломает нас и формирует нас. Are you Struggling? Are you finding it difficult? Good. Join the club. То есть вы проходите трудности, вам сложно жить. This man would not be able to testify of a wonderful thing that God has done if his eyes weren't messed up. And I would not be able to say to you that I am cancer-free if I didn't have cancer. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. I have learned more. Things through difficulties than I've ever learned through good stuff. Yeah. Я больше выучил уроков, проходя через трудности, чем пребывая в благословении просто Божьем. I'm gonna I'm gonna end with an assignment for you, just something for you to do with you. Okay. I want you all to. Я хочу завершить вот. I want you all to close your eyes for a minute. Okay. Я прошу вас закрыть свои глаза. No, I'm not. This is not an altar call. Okay. Close your eyes. Это не призыв к алтарю. Now. I want you to think of one of the happiest things that ever happened to you. Okay? I want you to remember the most happiest thing that ever happened to you. Go to your happy place right now. I want you to think of something you really enjoy. Okay? То, что вам Have you got it? Понравилось. When you've got it, raise your hand. When you've got something, raise your при, hand. Вот, вспомнили это, вот okay? поднимите свою руку. All right, open your eyes. Откройте глаза. Open your eyes. Okay? Now I have a question for you. Я сейчас вопрос. What did you learn? Что бы вы учили из этого? Вот из этого радостного места. What did you learn? Что вы там выучили? Chances are nothing. Большое вероятность, что ничего. Yeah. All right, now close your eyes again. Сейчас опять закройте глаза. Now I want you to think of one of the most difficult things you've ever faced in your life. Вспомните это самую самую какую-то сложную ситуацию, в которой была ваша жизнь. Have you got it? Have you got it? Raise your hand. Вы вспомнили? Поднимите руку. All right, open your eyes. Откройте. What did you learn in that? Что вы выучили в этой ситуации? I bet someone says never trust a man with glasses, right? Look both ways before you cross the street, right? I had, I was, um, um, I got in a fight with someone, right? I won't tell you the details of it. Я когда-то вот подрался с кем-то. Guy was standing right here, and I was here. То есть парень вот стал на коротком расстоянии. The guy pushed me, and I pushed him back. То есть он толкнул меня, я толкнул его. I made a mistake that I will never make again. То есть я сделал ошибку, которую я больше никогда не сделаю. I put my head down and I was daydreaming. И я опустил голову и просто думал о чем-то. And I took my eyes off of him. И я спустил свои глаза с него. Fortunately for me, I have very fast reflexes. То есть хорошо, что у меня быстрые рефлексы. As I slightly lifted my head, I could see his fist coming to my face. То есть я увидел его. Кулак, летящий в сторону моего лица. Его кулак просто проехал через меня. И там был телефон на стене. И я вот так отворачиваюсь, ударился по телефону, и вот здесь до сих пор шрам на моей. И я сразу вышел из стены и его в глаза, и сбил его работу, кстати говоря. That wasn't very nice. No, я назад ему сломал челюсть. Right, but I'll never forget it. No, я никогда не забуду этот момент. And I have the mark to remind me. 
И вот у меня есть right. напоминание об этом случае. I will never take my eyes off of anyone that's threatening me ever again. То есть я знаю, что нельзя спускать глаз. Ever. Никогда. I was in Los Angeles once. Я был в Лос-Анджелесе однажды. I was I was in a shop. Я был в магазине. And this guy comes in. Now remember, I was in a black neighborhood, okay? And when I say black neighborhood, there are no Latinos, there are no whites, there are no Chinese, all black, right? То есть в моем районе были одни черные люди, никаких других национальностей. Откуда-то вот этот белый появляет босиком, который как будто только что выступил из фильма про Иисуса Иисуса. Он имел длинную одежду, какой-то ремень, длинные волосы. And he was talking in a kind of King James English. He saw me and said something like this. Would thou so helpeth me to have a morsel of bread, for I am indeed hungry. Something like that, right? I don't know if you can translate that, right? And all of a sudden, he looked at me, he said, wait, you're a Christian, aren't you? Он посмотрел, а, так ты же христианин. И тебе, и я нужен тебе. Я думал, я сейчас не спущу глаз этого странного. Is because of what happened with me. Потому что я один раз уже прошел урок. Я не спускался этого мужика глаз. You may not like the difficult things that happen to you. Тебе может не нравиться те трудности, с которыми ты сталкиваешься. But God uses them to shape you. Но Бог использует их, чтобы формировать тебя. So that He can use you. Чтобы Он мог использовать тебя. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Давайте помолимся. I'm just going to pray. I don't know if you want to translate or not, okay? As I came in today, I, and, and we were getting ready for this, I was praying and trying to hear what God was trying to say. But I know that we're all in the wilderness in one way or another. I know that God is taking us through so that we can be strengthened and be used by him. And maybe as you've been hearing today about evangelism and witnessing and things like that, maybe you've felt a sense of inadequacy. Or maybe you felt like, I could never do this because I have this issue. I'm going through that. I'm ha this is happening with me. I want you to be encouraged today. God loves you. God will never quit on you, even when you fail him. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. But the next verse, no one knows. Though he may fall, he may stumble, he will not utterly be cast down, because the Lord upholds him with his hands. So God's going to uphold you. God's going to help you. God's going to touch you. He's going to be with you. Father, I thank you for being good to us. Your kindness, your mercy, your love, your forgiveness. Lord, I'm so grateful for what you've already done for us, for saving us, for delivering us. And there was nothing we could ever do for this wonderful salvation that we have. And God, you've given us a hope, something that is steadfast and sure. Lord, when this body is done, we're going to get another one. And it's going to be like yours, Lord Jesus. It's going to be amazing. But here we are, your children, right now. And we're in this process. And Lord, I, I just sense that you're doing this in so many places with so many people. So many of your people in the midst of all this craziness, this political uncertainty. Listen, stop. Let me stop you for just a minute. Okay? Let me stop you for just a minute. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. 
Stop worrying about Brexit. Stop worrying about our political leaders. Pray, yes, but stop worrying. Because God knows what he's doing. God is in control of the king's head. He turns it where he wills. God is the one that put David Cameron in, in, in power and took him out. And even with Boris and Donald, he does the same. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Father, I pray that you help us to let go. Help us to let go of our fears, our doubts, our concerns, our worries, our troubles. Help us to learn, Lord. Help us, Lord, again, you said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you will go. I will guide you with my eye. But then you said, don't be like the horse or the mule who has no understanding, who must be bridled. You have to put a bit in our mouths before they come. Lord, I pray that you'd help all of our, our hearts to be soft and pliable so you can use us. Lord, I pray that you encourage every person in this building that somehow when we leave this room, we will remember, even those who can't understand me at this point, but just because we're praying, just because we asked you, Lord, would you pour out your spirit in a way we've never experienced? Would you open our eyes to see what's going on and ears to hear you and help us to understand where we are and who we are and the times that we're in and what we have to do? Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. What a day it's been, tremendous time. And I have just a few words of blessing from the scriptures. From the book of Hebrews. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being part of today.